a trend I've noticed in Harajuku over the last couple of years is there's been more and more cute snacks like really colourful or rainbow things or animal shaped kawaii snacks that you can take pictures of for your Instagram. They are elsewhere in Tokyo as well but I've noticed a lot of them in Harajuku because it's the home of kawaii. So today I'm going to show you some of them. Now I have a theory about why there are so many rainbow snacks now and what it tells us about how Harajuku is changing. That's going to be at the end of the video if you want to hear it. There's new Japan videos on my channel every Thursday if you want to subscribe and if you're watching this as it comes out take a look at my Kickstarter for my Japan travel guide. The link's in the description. Now on to the cute snacks. This shop, Icevelt Gelato, sounds like a German name, Icevelt, has cute ice creams in the shape of animals. They look a bit like the ones I saw last time at Zoo Ice Cream Harajuku where they had the fake vending machine with the animal characters in. Maybe they're copying them. I'm pretty sure that was just a person behind a curtain and not an actual vending machine. But it is a fun idea. Okay, back to Icevelt. Icevelt Gelato actually started in California, in LA. This is the second branch. The ice creams are made of quality gelato, so they taste good as well as looking super kawaii. But really, have you ever had an ice cream that was bad? At this shop, long, longer, longest, you can get really long ice creams, churros, and tornado potatoes, so the spiral potatoes on a stick. And they also do rainbow cheese toasties and rainbow roll ice cream. I've seen how they make this. They put the ice cream on a freezing plate and then they scrape it up so it goes into rolls. Look how excited the people are on the poster. I'm here at the end of the day in winter, the off season. That's why it's so quiet. But how do you decide which to get? Long, longer or longest? Well, as we're here, it seems like a waste not to go for longest. We're gonna go for the tornado potato. Longer is sold out, but they've still got long and longest. So we're gonna go for the longest. 52 centimeters, half a meter of tornado potato. You can choose a flavor for the tornado potato from barbecue, soy sauce and butter, or consomme, which I think is like chicken broth. We went for soy sauce and butter. It's probably better not to look at this bit. I'm not sure how healthy this is gonna be. <laughs> I don't think I could eat as much sugar as in one of the longest ice creams though. It's probably pretty bad for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's safety first at long, longer, longest. They give you a cap to cover the pointy end of the stick. A half meter long tornado potato can be a dangerous weapon. They say you don't hurt anyone. Protected. Mm -hmm. As long as I don't swallow it. <laughs> Is that tricky to eat? Where do you start? <laughs> oh man. That butter. <laughs> Is it strong? Yeah. You should be able to make your way through 52 wow. centimeters. Yeah. <laughs> it's really strong. <laughs> The rainbow cheese toasty looked so colourful that I had to get one to see if it's really that bright. Here's my rainbow cheese toasty. It said wait for a minute to cool down and then pull it apart slowly to get the proper rainbow effect. <laughs> right, am I going to screw this up? <laughs> one chance. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, it's really bright. It looks like a monster toasty. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely rainbow. <laughs> That's really fluorescent. <laughs> it does cheese taste better when it's rainbow. Give it a taste. Try. <laughs> tastes like a normal toasty, so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Even if my rainbow toasty Instagram skills are weak, it was still fun. And I was impressed by how bright the colours were. Part impressed, part horrified. That must be a lot of food colouring. It looks like plastic. <laughs> Did you enjoy that film? It was long. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that was my salt intake for about a year on that. It was very salty, very strong flavouring. <laughs> it wasn't that toasted bad, but it was an assault. <laughs> an assault on the sense. Yeah, it wasn't delicate flavour or anything. <laughs> Still, it was fun. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sweet Paradise is a restaurant with a buffet and it's mainly a buffet of desserts. They say they have food but it's all about the dessert. This shop behind me, La China, was actually the original place where you could get the rainbow cheese toasty, I believe. And they said the food colourings were all natural, which I find kind of hard to believe because they're so bright. I saw a video of someone came here and they queued for about 40 minutes to get a rainbow toasty. But there's actually nobody here now. <laughs> it's, um, it's late afternoon on a Monday, but Harajuku's been really busy today. There's been so many people here. Oh. <laughs> I've got what that's called. There is a name. Is that a corn dog? Rainbow dog. Rainbow dog. A corn corn dog. Does a corn dog normally have cheese in it? <laughs> if you're from America, tell us in the comments. This stand also has tornado potatoes, although the one we had was two centimeters longer, the longest in Japan. And there's yogurt juice served in light bulbs that light up. You get a little light bulb keychain with them. There's also bag soda, drinks in semi-medical style bags. I guess it's a bit like a Capri Sun. And they come with heart-shaped bendy straws. Of course, crepes are the original snack of Harajuku. They have been here for years and they'll always be the best one for me. There's so many different types. Every combination you can think of, of ice cream, cream, chocolate, fruit, strawberries, all the good things. Good grief. So you can get soda in baby bottles. That's kind of weird to me. You can choose the colour of the soda, it doesn't say what the flavours are. <laughs> They're doing rainbow candy floss as well. And poop ice cream. <laughs> Not so sure about this one. Fussy Candy Factory is the main shop for giant rainbow candy floss. Lots of people think this is the classic Harajuku snack, but actually it wasn't there when I first went to Harajuku. It's the crepes that are the original and the best. Please be careful the cotton candy doesn't hit other people. <laughs> In order to spend fun, let's manners up with everyone. Manners up everyone. Here's where you get the giant rainbow cotton candies. This tells you all the different flavors. You can go for three colours or the whole rainbow. Only 160 calories, I think it'd be more than that. This shop's doing character candy floss. <laughs> the rabbit's cute, it looks so big and fluffy. <laughs> and you can get light bulb soda here as well. Underneath, there's another branch of Rainbow Sweets Harajuku. I'm not sure if both are still open, but honestly, these shops seem to be copying each other so much that I'm sure you can get the same items elsewhere. They have a rainbow crepe here as well. It looks like the actual crepe is rainbow colored. They must swirl all the batter on to make it. There's this rainbow road proposing with your rainbow stuff. <laughs> Now in the years I've been coming to Harajuku, it's definitely changed and I've definitely seen a lot more of these cute Instagram style snacks coming in and we've seen a lot of shops doing the same things, they all seem to be sort of copying each other and trying to do what's popular. And my theory on this, which could be wrong, but it's what I think, is that as tourism to Japan has really increased by a huge amount over the last nine or 10 years, all the guidebooks are telling tourists to come to Harajuku and see the crazy Japanese fashion. So people are coming here who aren't necessarily interested in cute or alternative fashion, just to have a look around and see what there is. And they're not gonna buy any of the clothes from the shops, but maybe they will buy a rainbow candy floss or a rainbow cheese toasty. So that's the sort of thing that's flourishing now rather than the fashion. And I've noticed some of the original indie fashion shops have been moving out of Harajuku or closing down. And I think maybe that's why. So I think my message is if you come to Harajuku and you are into the fashion, don't just have a rainbow candy floss. Have one if you want, but at least buy a few accessories or things from the shops as well to keep the original spirit of Harajuku going. They say it's part of being a responsible tourist to spend your holiday dollars, pounds or yen, helping the local economy and supporting the place you've come to see. 
Or maybe that's just my way of justifying my Harajuku shopping spree. Let me know what you think in the comments. So that's it for my roundup of cute and Instagram snacks in Harajuku. There are some others that I didn't show you. Um, there's a place called Eddie's Ice Cream that does ice creams with really big sort of accessories and chocolate shapes on top of them. There's Cafe Ron Ron that you might have heard of. That's like a conveyor belt sushi restaurant, but instead of sushi, it has desserts. And there's several others as well. I didn't try them all because I think I'd die from an overdose of sugar if I did. I think Phil almost died from a salt overdose on that tornado potato. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to have a lot to drink to try and compensate for that. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun and I hope you've enjoyed seeing them. So if you come to Harajuku and try any of them, remember to tag me in your pictures. I'm cakes with faces on pretty much everything. And there's new videos about Japan every Thursday if you want to subscribe. See you soon. Bye-bye.